everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're just starting to welcome. So for today's video, I'm not wearing my glasses because I'm having a break from them because we're hurting my eyes a little bit. Uh, we're going to be talking about the difference between male and female autism. Peter's got stars in his face because I gave him these to use because he's got spots. They're like patches that you put on your face for spotties. So, um... Um, you may have heard me talk a bit about Peter on TikTok and other various platforms. He's my best friend. So, um, I'm going to um, talk about, um, I'm first going to say what the definition of autism is. And then I'm going to talk about how I got diagnosed, how Peter got diagnosed, how we came to realise that we had autism and different things like that. So. Uh, this is a web definition that I've just found on Peter's phone. So, Autism Spectrum Disorder, ASD, is a developmental disability caused by differences in the brain. People with ASD often have problems with social communication and interaction and restricted repetitive behaviours or interests. People with ASD, Autism Spectrum Disorder, it gets shortened to ASD, may also have difficulty ways of learning, moving or paying attention. So, yeah, it's a spectrum, so everyone's different. So, would you like to um, um, introduce yourself and just tell everybody, um, um, just tell everybody like um, your name and where you're from, and um, and mm -hmm. yeah. Well, my my name is Peter, and I'm originally from Falkirk. Sorry, just take a sip of water. Yeah, so Peter's from a place called Falkirk. Uh, would it be right for me to say that Falkirk's in the middle of Edinburgh and Glasgow? In between, yes, it's closer to Edinburgh. Yeah, but it's it's um, kind of in between, but slightly closer. And uh, what was your experiences of growing up there? Don't know. It was kind of quiet out of the way, wasn't it? Yep. But Falkirk in a whole is it a nice area or is it rough or? Could be better. Uh, yeah, a bit run down. So yeah, but I've been to Falkirk and I don't mind it. It's okay. So anyhow, let's get into the subject of autism. So there's differences between identifying female people and identifying male people. And every person with autism uh, stories and uh, difficulties are a bit different. So let's talk about diagnosis and how we got diagnosed. So. Um, would you like me to start? Yeah. Or would you like to start? No, you can start. So, when I was about... My mum had always known there was something different, uh, even from six months old. She said to me um, that at six months old, there was a lot of times where I was very... I only slept for half an hour as a child, and it really distressed her. She didn't get much sleep, and it was very hard for her. And she knew... It was something, and at four years old, I vaguely remember at four years old going and getting a test done um, and being just being misdiagnosed with everything. Basically, they one one point tried to, when I was a teenager, they bloody tried to say I had Tourette's syndrome because <laughs> I was a bit hyper and I used to have repetitive vocal tics. But um, when I was about six years old my mum knew what autism was but she didn't know what asperger's was now asperger's is on the spectrum of autism but we don't use the term asperger's anymore a lot of us people now personally for me i don't mind the label asperger's because that's what i got diagnosed with it doesn't bother me but i know that some people don't like it for reasons that are personal and i know that it's not what's officially diagnosed now it's <clears throat> <coughs> Excuse me, I'm choking on my own saliva. Asperger's is not what they call it now. They call it mild. No, they call it high functioning autism or um, on the spectrum, I think, or autistic spectrum. Result. So I can't remember when they took that away, but I don't think it was many years ago because someday I know got diagnosed like four or five years ago and they got the label Asperger's. So <coughs> so my mum knew what that was but she'd never heard of Asperger's and 
she'd been she'd wrote wrote for ages to different to, to the BBC begging them for a job and she got an interview but she didn't get the job. But her friend Hannah did. So her friend Hannah went to the the the, the day where you do the team building and my mum decided to go along and she joined in not meant to join in and they just thought that she was a member of staff already and been picked so when she said to them actually this is not my job that i didn't get a job here they just said oh well you did the, the thing you can stay so she stayed and one night she had to do some research in a library and she was like oh my god this is what isla's got back then i was some called something different dead name not dead naming myself but anyhow so she read up about it and that's just how it went and then in those days, it was just so easy because there was less people getting diagnosed, so it was a lot easier. So my mum, uh, um, I can't remember what way she got me diagnosed, but I know that she, I remember going to York Hill Hospital, which is the hospital in Glasgow. It's now moved, but it was in York Hill and you had to go round the corner with a one of those American style like things that look like that with the traffic light on. And then we went round the corner and we went in I just remember on the day, they did a few assessments. They spoke to my mum in one room. They had two people in the room with me and I played with a doll's house. It was more, it wasn't like a proper doll's house. It was more like a civilian farm or playmobile, both. And they just chatted away to me. And then, yeah, that was just basically how I got diagnosed. And I got diagnosed at six. So would you like to talk about your diagnostic experience how people came to find out that you were autistic and yeah um following on um just before peter answers i will give him a chance to speak i know i talk too much but i had i was diagnosed because all throughout my life i was very socially awkward i just didn't really want to hang about with kids i always did things <clears throat> no i didn't say I didn't <coughs> <coughs> want to hang about kids but I was very delayed so yeah and I wasn't very good I always hung about with children that were younger than me and I always um what it, I just yeah I just was very slow in development and I just had a lot of uh, repetitive behaviors and I had a very strict eating thing with sensory so I only ate sausage beans and mash sausage beans and chips chicken nuggets beans and chips chicken nuggets beans and mash that's all i ate and yeah it was difficult because my mum had to get one of those plates with the section like the cutlery goes here and a little bit for the mash a little bit for whatever and it was the kiddies thing like the school plates so that was for me so you talk a bit about how you got diagnosed what age you got diagnosed and what process was involved and what made you uh what made you come to the conclusion or your family or whoever realized that you were autistic oh i had a record of needs from the age of five but over the 10 years i had we did we didn't know exactly what it was you know i had a record of needs as well and they don't do that anymore sorry to interrupt but right. What age did you get diagnosed? At uh, the age of 15 years old, um, uh, by a child and adolescent uh, psychologist uh, that my dad uh, got me to see. Um, so how did your dad go about getting that? Did he take you to the doctor? And so then the doctor must have, spoke yeah, to you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <coughs> and what led your dad to have this inkling or knowing that you had autism, what was what led to that? I think just speaking to teachers, really. Do you think teachers... So did teachers come to your dad and actually say, I think he might be autistic, or did your dad uh, get speaking to teachers and make his own mind up? Uh, maybe a bit of both. So... What actually happened on the day you got diagnosed? D diagnosed? Oh, I got a letter from the child and adolescent psychologist just um, explaining my diagnosis. No, but did, Sorry. You, 
did you get it that day there and then or uh, I, I, well, a few a week later all right so what i mean is the day that you went to the child and adolescent psychologist how did you get diagnosed did you oh, go... i got filmed i got filmed and what did you have to do in the uh, film? i had a conversation with a psychologist and i think it was about halloween and uh, he was looking at the um, I was interacting with him in the body language, a lack of, a lack of eye contact, etc. And do you think you're, and did your dad have to go in a separate room like my mum did and speak to someone else? I think so, yes, yes. So, <clears throat> what do you think, do you think being diagnosed at 15 was far, t was, was, was late? Or do you think it was just right? Or do you feel that if you'd been diagnosed earlier, you might have been able to get more help? I think uh, if I was diagnosed earlier, I would have been able to get more help. And what do you think um, about the diagnostic criteria? Do you think back then it, it would have spotted everyone or do you think it would have missed some people? I think it would have missed some people. What makes you think that? Uh, uh, well, I see in particular who are good at masking or autism. Yeah. So, talking about masking, and I do it a lot, this is a thing where us autistic girls in particular, men do it as well, but it's mainly autistic girls that do it. And um, girls, us girls or I, female identifying people, tend to um <clears throat> we tend to like co watch what other people are doing in society and copy them and we then come across as oh we're not autistic and this is the issue if my mum hadn't have read up about it and spotted about it i probably wouldn't have been diagnosed for years and years and years and this is why it's so important for people to get diagnosed young and this is one thing now we're going to touch upon schooling so I was very, very fortunate. I'd struggled for so many years. My mum found a support group. The parents had got kids into a school like mine. So I went. Now, it wasn't just a process. It wasn't just a thing of getting into the school and that was that. So I'm going to touch on it. So my school was a school that did the same curriculum, the same exams, the same everything as a normal school. The only difference was it was tailored towards autism, less than a class, and it was a boarding school. So <clears throat> you couldn't just go there, and it wasn't the school that made it difficult. Wherever you were living, you had to argue with the local authority who pays for your pays for you to go to a normal school. You had to argue with them in order for them to fund it, and it took a long time. And we were living in Glasgow at the time, Glasgow Education Authority, and it was really difficult because... Nobody from Glasgow had ever gone before. And um camera's just a bit, we're going to move it a bit. That's a better angle. So, the <clears throat> nobody had ever been before from Glasgow. Well, actually, I think they said somebody had been like 20 years ago before me, which I didn't think the fucking school was even open that long, but it was. Anyhow, cut a long story short. So, my mum had to go nearly every day and fight and fight and fight, and she had to get doctors to write medical letters and etc because the problem for me was that all the special schools in the area were for people that were like really severe flapping their hands things like that and that's not me and i'm not saying that they're not valid and that they're any less than me they're not but for me personally i i would have been held back in that situation so no for me it was quite difficult so i got to so my mum fought to get me into school and i had to have an assessment and I got in and I just remember the day I got in, my mum's face burst with tears. And I remember going to my school and it was a great experience. There was some things that I did like about it. There was a lot that was great about it. There was some things I didn't like. I didn't like having to be away from home and not having some of the freedom that you get living at home. Um, but I did like it because um, everybody was so supportive at my school. And, Everyone was loving and it was a big community and it was just great. But I didn't, 
like the fact I couldn't go home until half terms, which is a pain in the ass. Oh, one weekend we'd go home, we'd fly home. And uh, then, um, yeah, so that's what happened to me. So yeah, my school helped me a lot. And I think being diagnosed young, if I hadn't have been diagnosed, I wouldn't have been able to go to my school because my mum wouldn't have, wouldn't have had anything. It's for autism only now, but back then it was for a range of special needs, but I think they changed it only to autism and Asperger's syndrome. So for me, it was a bit difficult because I really wanted to go. Um, I was really overjoyed when I got the place because I knew that I was eventually going to get the right help and we did activities on a weekend, on an evening, shared a bedroom with someone and I always had friends, people around me. The only negative I will say, apart from not going home, was the fact that um, I've left, since I've left the school, I've not really had a lot of friends because the people at my school, they all live over the country. I've got one friend in Penzance down at the bottom of Cornwall. I've got one friend up in Aberdeen. I've got one friend in Bradford, one in da a few in Derbyshire, one near London, one in Basingstoke, one in Newcastle, Middlesbrough. So I'm thinking, fucking hell. So anyhow, yeah. So I found school pretty straightforward because of that. Apart from when I first started school at primary school for a little bit, I got bullied, but I ended up going to school about seven years old. So anyway, let's talk a bit more about uh, Peter's schooling. So if anyone wants to check my school, it's Alder Wasley, A-L-D-E-R-W-A-S-L-E-Y, Hall, H-A-L-L, -L, school. It's an amazing school. Anyhow, uh, Peter, what school, what school did you go to? How was your school life and how... Uh, were you in a special needs unit? Was it a mainstream school? And how did it, um, was it easier? Uh, what things were positives and what were negatives? And what things could they have done better for autism? Like at my school, we had a speech and language therapist in every class to support staff. We had um, occupational therapy on site. We had therapies. We had support staff in the evening. We had everything to help us. What you talk about now about your school now that I've rambled on about crap. <laughs> All right, um, went to a mainstream school, uh, Denny High. Yeah. And um, was that a special needs unit, and it was uh, mostly for dyslexic pupils. Um, I didn't have anybody else with autism until I got diagnosed. Uh, well, they had more people after I got diagnosed. So, let me get this right. So, was your school a mainstream school, but they had special... They had a, a bit in the building where they only had classrooms for people that had additional needs? Yes, that's right, yeah. yeah. So, first of all, this is just how I feel about that. I feel that that doesn't give you the specialist help because I feel like they're segregating you and by being segregated did that lead to more did that lead to bullying because if you're segregated would that not lead to bullying yeah, but where there stigmatism but did you get bullied because you were in these classes or no, not tre really? treated definitely mean by other children yeah but was it bullying yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're on, you You know, bullying is horrible of all kinds and I just think it's horrible but most people that bully have got issues themselves but we're not here to talk about bullying uh, as a full thing but yeah, bullying is a big thing when you've got autism, it's horrible, do you know what I mean? And it's just horrible but I got bullied in primary school but luckily at my high school, at my, um, the, later, the later part of my primary school, at my special school I didn't, so anyhow, what do you think? What support did they have in your classroom? Uh, well, occasionally they had a speech and language therapist. I uh, had classes that uh, were small and uh, but uh, separate us from the rest of the mainstream unless we were ready to go into main actual mainstream. Yeah. So did you do any mainstream lessons? Oh yeah, I did. I uh, became more and more as a that's a progress through the, the years, yeah. 
So with my school, I do feel a little bit sometimes like we were held back because we're in a special school. They they didn't do give us the options to do certain to do exam certain exams, and they didn't allow us to choose our exams. We just got told which exams we were doing. So. I think in a mainstream school, if I'm right, you got to choose what subject you want to do. Yeah. And they would give you advice based on a job. If you said, I really want to be a paramedic, they were going to tell you, well, you need your maths, your English, and this, this, this. But there was three um, exams that you had to do, the maths, English, science. And yeah. then the rest were choices. See, we didn't get that at my school, the choice. So that was something that did piss me off a little bit. But... I do feel if I hadn't have gone to my school, I personally wouldn't have been able to do any exams because I really struggled at school. So do you think that that's maybe a positive about your school, that you've got choice? Uh, yes, yes. But what things do you think, from what I've spoken about my school, do you think they did so well that your school, that you couldn't have because you were in a mainstream school? Uh, no, not as specialised as your school. They didn't have all the support available. And I feel like my school was a thing that they had everything, but they also understood that we were individuals and they didn't hold us back a lot. And I feel like my school was just amazing. Miracles really did happen at my school. There was a boy that couldn't speak and he uh, now speaks fluently. So I was like, what the hell? And the doctors told me he'd never speak, and it was just mind-blowing. But anyhow, but my school was set in Derbyshire in the middle of effing nowhere, so it was a bit boring at times. But, yeah, <clears throat> so I feel personally that there's no wrong or right answer to whether a child should go to a special school or a child should go to a mainstream. I feel like there's positives of a mainstream because you get the opportunities to learn. But I feel like if you had the issues, the difficulties I had, special school was the best for me. But I do feel like my school could have benefited a lot of autistic people. And it was just really hard because you can't just go there. You've got to get funding. And to get that funding, it's real tooth or nail. Fight, 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 fight. And you've got to be really determined. There was days where my mum would come home from that education department after fighting them and she'd be... She would be like in floods of tears because she wanted me to get the right help. And I'm grateful that she did that to me. And it was just, you know, it was an, an experience. But yeah, uh, it was a bit annoying that I had different holidays from my pe from people in my area because English holidays have different holidays to Scotland. So because me living in Scotland, when they were on holiday, I was at school. And when I was at school, they were on holiday. I was on the holiday, so it was a bit... But anyhow, so um, how do you feel, um, what do you think the benefits are, um, we've touched on this a teeny bit, but how do you feel, I'm going to start off, but what do you feel the benefits are of being diagnosed younger and what are the disadvantages of being diagnosed later? So I think being diagnosed younger means that you can access services, you can get better help, you can um you can um know what you can know more about yourself and you don't have to worry that there's something majorly wrong or something going on because i don't like to see autism as something wrong it's just a different way of thinking different way of my brain working and i'm happy with that and for me personally i think being diagnosed young is the best thing i think getting diagnosed late can actually be a real hindrance because you can go your whole life struggling, struggling, struggling and not being able to know what's what's going on with you. And you can't access help because sometimes having a diagnosis makes it get help. Like me and Peter met at a group called Number Six, which is run by Autism Initiatives. And it's a group for adults on the spectrum who have high functioning autism without a learning disability i wouldn't have met peter i wouldn't have met my friend jen i wouldn't have met my friend justin many other fabulous people and the, and there it's good because they've got groups on they've got uh help that you can get they've got drop-ins so drop-ins where you can just go in between set times and socialize 
and it's really good if I'm ever in town and I'm thinking to myself, oh, I can't be bothered to go home. Uh, I would like a cup of, I would like a nice hot decaf tea because I don't drink caffeine. There's always decaf tea there. I can go in and have a cup of tea, have a half an hour hour's chat and head home and it's, it's something to do, you know. So, yeah. It has its positive and negatives because there's been a bit of drama there. But on a whole, it's a place I know that's safe for me. And everyone was so great about me transitioning and everything. But that's another video. But um, how do you think getting diagnosed young... Do you think getting diagnosed young makes a difference? And how do you think getting diagnosed late can hinder your life? I think the sooner the better, you know, the younger you get diagnosed, the more help you're going to get. And that help will make your life a lot easier because it means that you won't struggle as much, you know what I mean? And I wanted to touch a bit about autism, uh, a little bit, because this video is getting a bit long now, but autism, so what difficulties led you to believe that you had autism so i'm going to start so my difficulties were i've always had sensitivity to light that causes bad migraines for me it really can so my glasses are actually slightly tinted but you don't notice it because it's a zero percent tint which is like 15 percent tinted um but they call it a zero percent tinted spec savers um when i was younger i was very sensitive to noise textures of food have always been a thing so yeah so um, as I was saying, the battery ran out. No, not the battery. The storage got full, which is ridiculous because I've got five, whatever, hundred. So I need to go through it and delete stuff. Anyhow, so I was sensitive to noise. This has been a thing that's been a thing for ages. You know, the tags that you get at the back here and the ones you get at the back here on your pants or the ones you get at the side etch 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 make me etchy can't stand them got to cut them out that's why most of my jammies have got a hole at the bum my pants have got a hole at the side it's just so annoying but what led people to think that you've got autism peter like what behaviors or things do you struggle with now uh, and you struggled with as a child um the social interaction skills yeah. Yeah, I struggle with eye contact and I really struggled when I was a child. I just didn't fit in with people my age and my peers and I was just always the odd one out. Were you the same? Yeah. So yeah, so what do you think um what else do you think getting diagnosed? No, what else uh what other things did you have that made it diff sensory issues, uh things like that? No sensory issues. Uh, like what? Uh, sensitivity, sensitivity to noise well, and smell. 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 See, that's one thing. I've got a strong sense of smell, but I actually love nice smells. It's a heaven for me, century heaven. But anyhow, so, yeah, so that's that. So I think we're... um um. So we're going to end this video in a bit with something we would like... Something positive that we think is positive about autism and one thing we'd like the world to know. So for me, a positive about autism is that um, a lot of a lot of highly intelligent people uh, have got autism and that they're achieving great things. And autism is just, to me, it's just a different way of seeing things. It's not really... Um, it's not really for me. Um, I don't see it as an issue for me. One other thing I did want to touch on quickly is that I think women, uh, they need to change the diagnostic criteria because a lot of the time it's geared towards more male traits that are more obvious than women. But anyhow, and one thing I'd like the world to know about autism that we're not all the same and just because I don't look like it, I'm not doing this. <coughs> And I'm not like flapping about and I'm not um, wearing ear, my ear defenders and walking about. It doesn't mean I'm not autistic. And just because I don't come across as autistic doesn't mean that I'm not autistic. 
and that just because I'm autistic, you don't need to treat me patronising or any different. Treat me like you would somebody that's not got autism. And uh, 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 that's me. So what one thing, what positive thing do you think there is about autism and what one thing would you like people to know about autism in your uh, experience? Uh, you just see the world differently. Um, it's positive, isn't it? Yeah, but what do you think... Um, is positive about having autism and what do you think uh, you want the world to know about it that some people might have a stigma or a stereotype and what would you like to say that's not well, true? Well, um, not one person is the same, <coughs> really, and uh, what else was I going to say? Um, and a positive about having autism or a positive thing that's, there's um, positive things about autism that you like. Um, I don't know, there's specialist interests really um, yeah so a lot of people with autism have specialist interests and it become an obsession and they get engrossed in it so yeah so yeah but i just want to say thank you all for watching sorry if i've not covered everything you've been joined by peter and me as as always speak to all you've been watching isla and peter bye like share and subscribe Love you all. Bye. Oh, and thank you, everybody. It's meant the world to me. This 10K I've had on that last video. Oh, I'm getting emotional now because it means a lot to me. Not because it's big numbers, but because people have really... Um, it makes me feel like it's something that I'm doing right. And I just want to help people. And I just do these videos to inform people, help people, and have a bit of fun. So I'll speak to you later. Until another video. Bye. Bye.